In this video, we'll take a quick look at CI CD considerations for WebLogic running in Kubernetes. In our documentation site on GitHub, we have a section in their user guide on CI CD considerations. This provides a lot of information about the problem space. It talks about Docker image layering and why it's important and what are the implications of choosing different strategies in terms of the amount of storage you would need on each of your Kubernetes nodes. It also provides information about the WebLogic domain encryption keys, which are stored in the serialized system any .bat file and why those are important in a WebLogic domain. It provides detailed information about the different approaches that are available to make updates to your domain, including when you need to build a new image and what you can do with configuration overrides. It then provides information about different ways to make updates to the domain, like updating your applications or changing the configuration to add a new data source. Let's take a look at one of these approaches now. This is a Jenkins CI server, and we have three jobs set up here. The first one, create WebLogic image, actually uses the WebLogic image tool to create a base image. If you've already looked at the demonstration of the image tool, this is exactly the same script, create image, being run in a Jenkins job. Let's take a quick look at that script. You can see that it creates an image with JDK 8201, WebLogic 12213, and the latest PSU based on the Oracle Linux 7 Slim. If we take a look at the output, you can see, similarly to when we ran this from the command line, it's installed the JDK, installs WebLogic, updates opatch, installs the PSU, and finally creates the image for us. The second job we, hear, we have here is to create a primordial domain. This job creates a new empty WebLogic domain with just the admin user and password and an admin server. It does this using the WebLogic deploy tool. You can see it downloads the WebLogic deploy tool here if it's not already present. And then it does a Docker build, which runs the WebLogic deploy tool to create the domain. We'll take a look at these files in a moment. Finally, it zips up the domain into a zip file and stores it in the project. In real life, you'd probably put it into Artifactory or somewhere like that. For the purposes of this demonstration, we're just gonna keep it in this folder. Here's the model that we just saw. You can see it has literally just the admin, username and password. And these come from the properties file located here. Username and password. Now let's run the job. You can see it downloaded the WebLogic deploy tool and now it's building a domain. And now that it's finished creating the domain, it's created the zip file. So let's take a look in the workspace and we see here's our zip file with our empty domain. Again, we would probably store this in Artifactory rather than just leaving it in the file system here. Let's take a quick look at the domain that was created. Here's the image of the primordial domain that we just created a few seconds ago. Let's take a look inside and check the encryption key.
Here we can see the MD5 sum for the encryption keys. Try to remember this number. We'll come back to this later. Okay, now let's look at the third job. This is an update domain job. And we would run this job over and over again every time we make a change to the configuration of the domain. We want to deploy a new application, create a new data source, and so on. You can see it also uses WebLogic Deployment Tool. It starts by populating the image with the primordial domain that we just looked at. And then it runs the WebLogic Deploy Tool update domain to update the domain with the various applications and resources that we need. Let's take a look at some of these files. Here's the WebLogic Deploy Tool topology file. You can see this one has many more details. We're now defining a cluster with some dynamic servers. We're defining the admin server and listen, setting the listen ports, public addresses, and so on. And we have an application deployment as well. This is a web application. All of these references that you see here are to the properties files that we looked at earlier. Let's take another look now. So here's the properties that are being referred to. Also, let's take a quick look at the Docker file. So this is the Docker file that's being used to update the domain. You can see we're copying in the primordial domain zip file here, and later we unzip that into place. Later still, we run WebLogic Deploy Tools update domain feature. So it'll start with the existing domain and add in our model to it. Let's run this job now. You can see it's unzipped the primordial domain and now it's gonna run the update. And now it's finished and it's created a new image called markdomain 1.0. Let's take a look at that. So here's the new image that was just built just a few seconds ago. Let's take a look at this image and confirm that we still have the same domain encryption keys. If you remember the number from earlier, so you don't need to, it's right here. You can see that they're both the same. So this is still the same domain from WebLogic's point of view, which means that we could now go and roll the domain in Kubernetes and the managed servers will automatically join into the same cluster. So this has been a quick demonstration of some of the CI CD processes we can use to run WebLogic in Kubernetes and how we can deal with issues like the domain encryption key. Thanks.